Well, welcome back to Living Local. Time to check in with Movie Mike for what's new in theaters. Mike Schultz, arts editor for the River Cities Reader, joins us again for a review of some of last week's movies and to look at some of the new ones here in theaters. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Ah, pleasure as always. All righty. Yes. So last week, and I quote, it was a varying degrees of meh. <laughs> it was varying degrees of meh. That's yeah. exactly what yeah, it was. Yeah, nothing too great, nothing too bad. No, no. It was a completely blah weekend. Okay. It was, which is, I guess, better than horrible, but yeah. still, eh. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Well, we'll you start know. with the, the best blah. Okay. Uh, Alita <laughs> Battle Angel. Alita Battle Angel. Yes. Yeah. This is the uh, James Cameron produced and written uh, saga about a cyborg who uh, becomes, uh, well, who grows to, who learns to love. Okay. A cyborg who learns to How love. Precious. And also uh, does a lot of, uh, yeah, does a lot of fighting along the way. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fine. It's got a terrible script because James Cameron helped write it. Okay. So, you know, if you kind of groan at the dialogue in Titanic and Avatar, there's little here that you're going to enjoy. Um, the <laughs> story is, is kind of is kind of dull but it moves and it looks really it looks really cool okay. it's got a visual style that that works the action scenes are pretty great yeah um, Alita herself, you know, looks basically like Emma Stone. She's just got these gigantic does, eyeballs. Yeah. yeah, Emma Stone is a Disney princess, basically, <laughs> is what that is. Um, but she's fascinating to look at, and you've got good people in it. You've got Mahershala Ali and Jennifer Connelly and Christoph Waltz. Okay. It's bearable, okay. and it sets up for sequels galore, which I'm not sure is going to happen based on how much money it made. Yeah. But but well, uh, I won't dread them if they come. We're still waiting on the Avatar sequel, so. <laughs> Those are never coming. Like, Let's just stop pretending. talking about how much money that made. <laughs> right. All righty. Well, <laughs> we'll go also now to the worst man, which was, yeah. isn't it romantic? What a bummer. I really was looking forward to this yeah. a lot. Um, it's basically uh, a, a satire of rom-coms with Rebel Wilson in the role that you always see Katherine Heigl in or Sandra Bullock or Reese Witherspoon, right. um, who knocks her head and winds up in a, in her life has turned into a big romantic comedy. Um, the problem the problem is, with this movie, which I guess they should have seen coming, which all of us should have seen coming, is that when you're making fun of elements like kisses in the rain, or spontaneous karaoke numbers, or uh, romantic obstacles, uh, you know, you're still stuck with kisses in the rain and karaoke numbers. What yeah. I wrote is that it's like, it's like uh, filming a bad, make, uh, making fun of a bad Saturday Night Live skit. Mm -hmm. You're still stuck with a bad Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. Or a musical where, oh, somebody's not singing well, and isn't that funny? Well, it's still terrible singing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's boring um, because it's just following the same formula that it's making fun of others for following. Yeah. And so, so not that great. Bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah, kind of and Rebel Wilson is a straight woman in this, and it's like, I, I, no, that's a waste mm -hmm. of your talents. Yeah. You are you are the live wire of movies. You should yeah. be at least. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, a little disappointing Kind there. of a bummer. All righty, and uh, we'll also talk about Happy Death Day to you. This one was kind of right in the middle. Yeah, exactly. It's it's clever. It, it deals with, uh, it follows the same story of this woman, uh, this college student who uh, gets killed and then wakes up the day of her death and has to keep repeating it over and over again. Yeah. Um, it's got a pretty clever storyline in that you would think that it's like, okay, it's gonna be a different day where she gets killed, but no, this little hole in the space-time continuum sends her back to the first movie's day, oh, which man. irritates her to no end, except this time everything's a little different. The killer is different, her mom is alive in this one, her boyfriend is dating one of her rivals, and so it's set up really interestingly. The problem is that it kind of forgets to be funny and it forgets to be scary. And it's like, mm. that's the only point you should have yeah. to this movie. There's about 45 minute a gap where they completely forget about the killer subplot entirely. <laughs> and it's just, okay, so we're basically watching Back to the Future now. Um, so it's not bad. It's not a bad thing to watch nah, Back to the Future. Not but, at all. You know. it's, it's relatively well done. It's just, uh, just disappointing. Okay. Like all of last weekend's work. Yeah. Eh, Meh. It happens. Meh, All right. indeed. Well, let's hope for a better week this yeah. week. Uh, we'll move through these. We'll start off with uh, probably the most highly anticipated, How to Train Your Dragon 3, yeah. The Hidden World. I'm excited about this one. Uh, I really like the first two. This one is uh, taking place about a year after the events of the second film, where now the uh, their land is kind of overrun with dragons that they've saved. Uh -oh. And so, yeah, and so now they have to find a, a new place for the, all the dragons to go. And they find <laughs> this kind of dragon utopia that uh, they need to get to before this uh, bad guy dragon hunter tries to find it. Either way, um, visually it's going to be stunning. All those movies are stunning. The music is great. Uh, a lot of great celebrity voices. Uh, you've got uh, Kate Blanchett and Kristen Wiig and Kit Harington from Game of Thrones. Oh. Um, yeah, I liked the first one just fine. I thought the second one was fantastic. Uh, and this one kind of looks like a knockout so far, visually at least. Yeah. It, and uh, I do hear that you must bring tissues because it's going to be one of those Ooh. Toy Story 3 
yeah. jerk your heart out at the yeah. end type of movies. As so they try to do. Yeah. Well, that's hopefully their plan. it's good. I've never seen any of them. I've heard they're nothing missing out. but great things. They're, so. they're fantastic. Uh, and yeah. I am not above kids' movies. Good at for all. you. So no gotta, one should be. I got to check it out yeah. for sure. And uh, you also get a little Gerard Butler in there for good measure, too. You do get Gerard Butler. Yeah. I can stand him in this one because you don't have to see him. <laughs> it helps enormously. <laughs> All righty. Well, we have uh, Run the Race. This is a sports mm -hmm. drama. Yeah, this is a sports drama uh, about two brothers in the South in a very small town in the South who are trying to escape their small town. One of them is a high school football player who's hoping for a scholarship, but unfortunately gets uh, terribly injured in, in a game, kind of destroys his career right there. And so his brother starts taking up track in the hopes of his success in track, basically getting them out of the town. Okay. It's a, a pro-faith drama. I'm all on board with inspirational sports flicks. I think they're fun. They're, they all kind of follow the same arc, but depending on the level of earnestness and sincerity and, and intelligence, you know, they can be a blast. Yeah. They can be really great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. And you've got good actors. You have Michael T. Williamson from Forrest Gump and Frances Fisher, who's done a lot, Unforgiven, hmm. one of her big things. It looks kind of looks kind of okay. It always has a way of pulling at your heart. Right? Yeah, radio is one of my all-time favorites. Oh sure, sports drama. Even the crummy ones can get yeah. you teary-eyed yeah. by the end, just they because can. they're yeah, they're yeah. just kind of Absolutely. they work. Absolutely. All righty, and last but not least, fighting with my family. Fighting with my family. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. Not only because it sounds like the story of my life. Okay. Um, yeah, it's you know. <laughs> uh, this is also a sibling tale. This one takes uh, place in uh, England in about uh, 2012, and it's about a brother and sister who both wanted to join the WWE. Their dad was. Was a professional wrestler and has kind of uh, instilled that upon his kids. Um, only the only the woman makes it, um, and so she kind of goes to then America to succeed as a WWE star. It's a true story. Wow. Um, Dwayne Johnson, one of the co-producers, of course, makes a cameo in the film, <laughs> I believe, as well. Um, I'm I'm already digging on this because it's uh, written and directed by a gentleman named Stephen Merchant, who's an yeah. incredible British talent who helped know. create The Office and Extras and Hello Again. Um, a wonderful wonderful comic uh, comic genius really he's just sensational so and you've got uh, Cersei Lannister from uh, Game of Thrones playing yeah. the mom of the kids so between her and Kid <laughs> Harrington it is a Game of Thrones weekend at the Cineplex Bring should it be on. fun this one looks funny I mean Vince Vaughn I yeah. love yeah, he can do no, he can do no wrong. I completely forgot to mention him. Yeah. Yes, he, yes, he Vince does. Vaughn's great. So. Looks a lot of fun. Yeah, um, it could be a blast. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. WWE, that always has a yeah. special place in your heart, whether you want to admit it or exactly not. Exactly right. All righty. Yes. And really quick before we go, we yeah. have the Oscars this Sunday. Yeah. Are you picturing any big upsets? Here's what I'm thinking. Um, this probably won't happen, but mm -hmm. I'm thinking that uh, there's every bit of a chance that Spike Lee finally wins Best Director. Uh, everything is pointing towards it being Alfonso Cuaron for Roma, um, but Spike Lee has never been nominated in this category. He's 62, he's made some of the most classic movies of all time. I'm thinking that could be a, a pretty stunning upset and I will look really cool for having predicted it if it comes true. <laughs> I hope so. so. Yeah. yeah, but beyond that, uh, I think Roma's gonna win a lot and uh, you've got Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody is gonna win. Glenn Close will probably win for yeah. her first Oscar after 36 years of being nominated and not winning so yeah yeah and uh, we want to give you the Oscar mic for best movie review around I there. absolutely don't deserve okay yeah, yes well care. I'd like to <laughs> thank Yay. there's so many people to thank and I'm running out of time yeah I, I, all right there's the music <laughs> thanks for being here in a review the new movies coming out this week how to trade your dragon three the hidden world run the race fighting with my family and don't forget to catch the Oscars and also don't forget to go read Mike's movie reviews inside the latest reader on Stands Everywhere and online at rcreader.com. We'll have all this information on our website, ourquadcities.com, as well. We're back with more Living Local after this.